Okay, hi there. Here's another video on economic development, and we're going to ask the question this time, what is, what is the Lewis turning point? Well, here is Sir Arthur Lewis, a renowned economist and social scientist born in St. Lucia in the Caribbean, uh, just at the start of the First World War. He died in 1991. So he's died over 30 years ago now, but he is still known in economic development as one of the most significant contributors to theory and policy in this field. He received his education at the LSE and later became professor at the University of Manchester and the University of West Indies. And critically, in 1979, Arthur Lewis was awarded the Nobel Prize for Economic Sciences for his pioneering work, pioneering work on economic development and in particular his analysis on dualistic economies, the dual economy where you have both a farm, a primary sector, as well as an industrial sector. So the Lewis model proposed that developing countries, countries developing, emerging from low to middle income countries, could achieve faster economic growth by transferring workers through internal migration from the traditional farm sector of the economy to a more modern scaled industrial sector. So this labour transfer is pivotal to the Lewis model. And the model, the idea, had a significant impact on economic policy in developing countries, uh, particularly shaping the strategies of several national development plans, notion, uh, notably countries that are looking to rapidly industrialise and urbanise at the same time. So what is the Lewis turning point? Well, in a nutshell, the Lewis turning point refers to a point at which the traditional farm economy or agricultural economy transitions to a modern industrial economy. So according to the Lewis model, in a traditional farm dominated sector, labour is abundant. There is a huge supply of people able to work informally or informally in farming and extraction and things like oil and coal, etc. But because labour is abundant, wages are low in part because of the low level of skill, but also because there is an excess supply of labour in rural areas. Now, as industrialisation in a country begins, in other words, we're moving more towards a manufacturing economy, from textiles in Bangladesh to uh, assembly plants in Mexico and China, labour is gradually drawn away from the farm sector towards the modern industrial sector. Now, this is an internal transition. It's an internal demographic change. And it can lead over time to a relative shortage of labour in farming and therefore an increase in wages. See it uh, as the equivalent of, of a country losing workers to, uh, to other nations, causing an inward shift of labour supply. Now, at the Lewis turning point, the supply of labour from farming becomes limited, if you like, inelastic, and it becomes more inelastic and it's shifted to the left. And so, therefore, uh, average wages in farming start to go up. That then leads to higher production costs, which in turn raises the price of farm output. Whereas the modern industrial sector is now able to take advantage of the influx, the increasing supply of people who've left the farm sector and moved often internally towards urban manufacturing centres. And as the modern industrial sector can try to scale up production allied to low labour costs, it can now produce goods at a lower cost than the farm sector. So ultimately, as labour uh, becomes scarce in farming and wages rise, there's a greater incentive for businesses to invest in capital and technology to increase their productivity. And that in turn can raise incomes and output and profits uh, and ultimately living standards in rural areas. Now, this, this um, Lewis turning point is something that we often see in many countries. I think several developing emerging countries have experienced it and transitioned from traditional farming to more modern industrial economies. This data is for 2018. I've taken it from the United Nations, so it predates the pandemic. Apologies for being a little bit out of date. It will have changed a little bit, but the substance remains the same. So the world population is now above 8 billion, but in 2018 it was 7.6, of which 55% was urban and 44% rounding down, uh, so 45% rounding up, was rural. Now, interestingly, within that, let's take three countries. So Thailand is a fast-growing country, very, very interesting, low-middle-income country with an emerging manufacturing sector and still some progress to make when it comes to urbanisation. It's almost there that the, the urban population is almost rising above 50% in a population there of, of 70 million people. Vietnam is at an earlier stage. So again, Vietnam is manufacturing and developing and industrialising 
particularly in areas like semiconductors, they're manufacturing iPhones and iPads, for example. Their rural population is 62% of their total, 100 million population. The urban population, just under 40%. So they're not yet at the lowest turning point. Whereas in China, the rural population is now only about a third, just over a third of the total population. The, the urban population is, is coming on towards two thirds. So you can see in Vietnam here, a picture there of Ho Chi Minh City, uh, two thirds of Vietnam remains, broadly speaking, rural. The urban population has been growing. It reached over 36% in 2019, uh, 2020 and now continuing to grow. So more people more and more people are moving to the cities in the hope of higher living standards, better incomes and more availability of jobs as the economy not just industrializes but grows their service sector too. So Vietnam is urbanizing but from a lower base, whereas in China, here's a night scene review of the high-rise buildings in Shenzhen City, view from the Hong Kong border. Uh, we're now we're getting close to two-thirds of the population in China is, is urbanized. And that figure, of course, has shot up since 1980. These are the figures going forward on, the, on sort of five yearly basis there. Indeed, now you can see from this chart that the urban population uh, is now well above the, uh, the rural population. Of course, that rural population continues to decline. So I think we can say, safe with some degree of certainty, that China has moved uh, beyond the Lewis turning point. Now, it's important to note, finally, that moving beyond this point is not, it's no guarantee of economic growth and development. So if you have this big movement of population, uh, the economy is growing, but there's a big internal dynamic, countries must have the appropriate policies, demand and supply side policies, and the institutions to support sustainable industrialization, and also critically ensure that the benefits of growth are, are broadly spread, not just affecting the top 10%, but perhaps benefiting, let's say, the bottom 40% of the population. And they must also address the environmental and the social sustainability issues that clearly associated with industrialization and rapid urbanization. Uh, that said, no country on the planet has grown rich without urbanizing first. So there we go, a quick video, hopefully it was useful, on the Lewis turning point. Stay happy, stay safe, stay curious and stay positive, and see you sometime soon.